Wayne, ladies and gentlemen, we've invited the first class. Now we're inviting the executive platinum, platinum emerald, sapphire, and for me, those words are written. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome back Lee Harris from Blue Marine Travel. How are you, Lee? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, I missed a week last week, so I do apologize. Uh, but back once and more. So, um, yeah, plenty to get through as well. Well, I'm pretty sure that all of the news that you were going to tell us is pretty much the same kind of news that you're going to tell us this week. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to mention that Crew Travel is brought to you weekly by Blue Marine Travel. We haven't lost a passenger since Lee was born back in the late 1900s, and their people move people. Yes, we do. You do. So, yeah, I mean, anybody that is watching travel right now, and especially in Europe, it's just been insane. Um, I mean, you don't know whether or not the flight that you book for tomorrow is going to be canceled whether it even exists at all. <laughs> um, it is insanity. I, I, I know myself. I've been trying to book a flight for one of my children um, from, from Germany to Canada. And I, you just hold off, you hold off, you hold off because you just don't know what's going to happen next. But Heathrow seems to be making a lot of headlines as of late. What's going on there? They do, yeah, mostly not for right reasons, but we do have a little bit of good news today anyway. So uh, check-in staff and refueling workers have called off plans to strike after salary increases were accepted. Uh, British Airways check-in staff no longer plan to take strike action at Heathrow as workers accepted a 13% pay increase. Uh, more than 500 members of Unite had voted for industrial action as they sought to restore a 10% pay cut imposed by BA. Uh, that was during the pandemic under threat of being fired. Uh, however, Unite have confirmed members were balloted and accepted a new BA offer following extensive negotiations. Uh, the offer will be paid in several stages and uh, said it is worth up to 13% for the workers. Now, additionally, workers employed by aviation fuel services have also abandoned plans to strike action as they also received a 12.5% pay increase, which will be backdated to April. So strikes have been uh, avoided at Heathrow. Um, however, there are still lots of flight cancellations, delays and a build up of a lot of travellers within the check-in area. Yes, well, <laughs> I mean, that just would have like compounded the chaos that is already happening at Heathrow. Uh, that is making headlines around the world um, by a million. So at least we know we just have the general chaos that is happening at Heathrow. Yeah, I mean, it is one little part of uh, a bigger problem solved. Um, let's say that anyway. Um, the flight cancellations, baggage delays, everything else is, is still ongoing. And uh, in all honesty, it doesn't look like there's going to be an end in sight this summer anyway. Wow. And news out of Canada because COVID has not disappeared. Not completely, unfortunately, no. Uh, Canada has reintroduced randomised COVID-19 testing for arrivals as the other countries around the world opt to lift measures originally designed to reduce infection rates. Uh, the World, uh, world Health Organization reported cases of COVID-19 had increased by 30% uh, during the first two weeks of July. Uh, that's due to Omicron subvariants and the lifting of public health and social measure measures. Uh, Canada said testing would either take place outside airports or via a virtual appointment for a self-swab test, uh, and any positive test cases would have to isolate for up to 10 days. Yeah, it's happening, and news out of Frankfurt. Yeah, just as we were talking about flight cancellations, etc., uh, Frankfurt Airport has become the latest European airport to place the cap on flight numbers. Uh, that's in a bid to reduce disruption from delays and cancellations. Uh, Germany's busiest airport said it would reduce the number of takeoffs and landings to 88 movements per hour from this week. Uh, in a statement, Lufthansa, the airport's largest carrier, welcomed the move, stating that it was the right step to stabilise flight operations. Uh, this decision follows similar moves from airports, including Amsterdam, Gatwick and Heathrow. And the chaos continues. Uh, the EU uh, is going to be looking for permission to enter the UK. They are indeed, yep. The British government plans to implement the Electronic Travel Authorization Scheme, uh, which obliges visitors to apply for permission in order to visit the country. Uh, that also includes European visitors. 
Uh, more specifically, the new scheme intends to establish a contactless border crossing from 2024, uh, meaning that some passengers will be able to enter the country exempted from using an electronic passport gate or speaking to the border force officer. Uh, instead, the new scheme that intends to reduce the waiting time uh, means visitors will have to upload a photo of themselves and send it to the home office before their trip. Uh, travellers will be subject to pre-screening, as the government says, enabling them to be identified at the border using the most recent technology. Uh, furthermore, as of 2023, the Home Office will start introducing a permission to travel scheme, uh, with everyone wanting to travel being required to present such permission. Uh, the UK and Irish passport holders are exempted from such requirements, but everyone else will need to apply for the electronic travel authorization. Now, all visitors, including Europeans, will have to apply for it, which costs around 21 euros, and visitors will have to submit biographic, biometric and contact details, as well as answer some questions. Well, I'm going to pretend that I'm somebody from the UK. I am not going to visit the UK because they're going to charge me $21 or euros or pounds or whatever it is. I mean, every time there's an announcement that they've got to, if somebody from the UK has to pay to get into Europe, they're like, oh my goodness, how could they? Well, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving She's on. on the other foot. <laughs> <laughs> Qantas. Yeah, Qantas have ended its no-jab, no-fly rule for international passengers. Uh, in line with changed Australian government rules, Qantas has ended its policy of not flying unvaccinated passengers on its international services. Uh, that was from July the 19th. Uh, however, the airline warns some countries still only allow in vaccinated travellers and advises passengers to check their destination entry requirements. Uh, Qantas implemented the no-jab, no-fly rule across its international flights last year as Australia's borders began to reopen. Uh, at the time, the move enjoyed broad public support, and Qantas also insisted all its employees be vaccinated regardless of their role. And Malta has some news. They do, yeah. The Maltese authorities just recently announced that all COVID-related restrictions would be lifted as of July the 25th. Uh, this means that as soon as the COVID entry rules gets officially dropped, travellers will no longer be required to present a vaccination, recovery or test certificate upon their entry to Malta. Uh, the Maltese authorities decided to lift their entry rules at the end of the month, despite the increasing number of infection cases across the country and further into the continent. And the biggest question that crew are asking, and you know what, it is pretty much straight across the face of the planet, specifically more so in Europe for some reason, we are all looking for our bags. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've lost count the amount of times we've been asked questions with regards to baggage. So we're going to do a broad sort of overview uh, for people listening. I think it's probably the easiest way to do it. Anyway, so quite, like I said, the question we get asked at Blue Marine Travel is regards to lost bags and the rights as a passenger if your bag is lost. Now, as we all know, lost baggage is a real issue currently, especially with regards to the European airports. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the Montreal Convention, an international agreement on airline responsibilities, covers luggage on international flights. Uh, under the convention, the maximum an airline has to pay for lost, damaged or delayed luggage is around about $2,700 for each passenger. Now, if your luggage is delayed, the airline has to stump up for essential items only. So don't expect them to kick you out completely for your holiday. It's just not going to happen, unfortunately. Also, you will have to pay for the items first and then you have to claim them back later. So make sure you hang on to your receipts, otherwise you won't get reimbursed. Now, while a convention gives travellers 30 days to make a claim, airlines can specify a short period in their contracts. So whoever you're flying with, make sure you read the fine print before flying to make sure you know exactly how long you have to make a claim after your flights and your bags get lost. Now, if you are unlucky enough to find yourself bagless, it also pays to check your travel insurance. Now, some policies offer better lost luggage cover than the law. I know there's certain policies out there that offer up to $30,000. So please make sure if your travel insurance doesn't have lost luggage uh, insurance cover on it, I would suggest maybe at this moment in time, especially if you're traveling to Europe, to get a policy which will cover you for that as well. Because the reality is there is a chance your bag's gonna get lost at the moment. Now, also, simple tips to help with trying to negate lost luggage uh, is to take a photo of your baggage before departing. That way, instead of having to describe your baggage, you have an actual photo you can share the airline. This may sound silly, but when you're describing a black carry-on bag or a black holdall, you'll be surprised how many black holdalls get lost. So if you've got a photo of it, all the better. Send that to the airline and they should be able to find it a bit easier. Also, make sure to write your name address not only on the outside with a baggage tag, but also make sure you place your name, telephone number and email address on the inside of your bags. 
then if for any reason your tags fall off during the flight, your details will still be inside your luggage. So if it turns up at the airport and they open it up, they'll be able to see all your details. That way it'll get back to you quicker as well. Finally, especially, especially for crew who are traveling with expensive items, I would suggest at this moment in time, it may cost a bit, but stump up for some Apple Air tags or similar branded tags. They do work. They're a lifesaver for a lot of people at the moment. Um, and it could be the difference between your bags not being returned to you and your bags being found. Yes. Well, and all of this advice is going to be on your website as well, correct? It is indeed. You can find it all on there. Perfect. And we're going to include Lee's details. And of course, we're going to include the website where you can go and check out all this information. Lee, once again, thank you for being the Grim Reaper. <laughs> I do my best. And next week, I'll be doing it from the UK. So we'll find out if my bags arrive. Oh, wouldn't that be Murphy's Law? <laughs> Can you imagine? Jesus. <laughs> uh, I've got to say, I'm, I, that is the one thing I'm slightly petrified about traveling. Um, I'm just praying. Bear in mind, I'm in the UK for a month. If my bags don't turn up, then I am royally in trouble. Guess you better buy that insurance. <laughs> yeah, I better take my own advice, Ben. I. You've been watching another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're boarding passengers seated in zones E.